Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Democracy 3. My name, of course, is Obito Potato. Now, we are going to be retrying a Socialist USA, and thank you very much to everybody who gave me tips and hints on what to do and why I was being such a gosh darn failure. That's right, yeah, we're going to be retrying this. Once again, we are going to be trying to go for the Socialist Paradise achievement. I would definitely think that one of the most difficult places to do that is the United States, without a shadow of a doubt. But we're going to be trying it here anyway. Uh, we'll be going as, I don't know, the Socialist Coalition, and we can go up against... I don't know, it doesn't really matter, the Conservatives. Ugh, who cares? It's not that big a deal. But anyway... So, the Socialist Paradise Achievement, for anybody that is unaware, is basically, what was it again? I don't have it up on my screen for the first time in a while, um, but basically it's the lowest possible working week, poverty below 20% and equality above 90% or something. Um, so, let me just talk a little bit about what we plan to do, because last time uh, the real downfall came from the fact that ethnic minorities really were not hugely keen on us. And that is understandable, and um, I can appreciate that. I mean, ghettos was something that just went on for a little bit too long. So, this time, we are going to say, hey, you know this huge massive debt thing that we're in? Let's, let's put off dealing with it, okay? Let's, let's be true socialists and let's say, hey, let's invest in the future of our country, right? Okay, so the first thing that we are going to implement is a policy which I was made aware of by somebody in the comments. Now, it was the Race Discrimination Act, and I think if we introduce that, then we should have a little bit of an easier time. I can see the diversity quotas for companies, you know, I can appreciate that, but I'm really looking for the Race Discrimination Act, and I don't really know where it would be. Perhaps it is already implemented? I mean, there's the Stamp Out Racism Week, Law and Order, Race Discrimination Act. Okay, perfect. Let's do this. Racial tension down, ethnic minorities up, liberals up, uh, conservatives not too keen on us, but liberals really freaking love us. And that, I think, is, is going to be the pillar on which we try and progress. Now, I do really want to actually introduce another policy that, um, that will make, make ethnic minorities a little bit more happy with us. And I'm just yeah, I'm just thinking, what's, what's the best one to go about doing that with? I mean, we could do the, the Stamp Out Racism Week or the Diversity Quotas for Companies. I think we'll do the Diversity Quotas for Companies. Um, yeah, you know, reducing racial tension, uh, self-employed down. Capitalists are going to be a little bit annoyed with us, but at the same time, it's going to raise equality and uh, the amount that ethnic minorities actually like us. So, overall, that's pretty much a free way of maintaining the fact that uh, that we want ethnic minorities to want to like us. I mean, because quite simply, we were assassinated um, by the Black Power Group, I think, last time, and that's not something that I want to see happen again. So this time we're going to say, hey, let's not deal with the deficit for now. Let's try and make people a little bit happier with us. So we're left on one political capital. We've got a 35 billion deficit now. That's pocket change, really, for us, isn't it? Uh, we, we really do have a very, very large amount of income. Now, deficit is now 22 billion. That's okay. You know what? I don't think we're going to deal with the deficit until it gets to more than 100 billion per turn. So that could be 10 turns away. It could be 50 turns away. It could be like two turns away, right? It could be literally any length of time. But that's the that's the mental sort of area that I'm I'm going to say, yeah, we need to concentrate on, on finances and funding and whatnot as soon as it reaches uh, a deficit of 100 billion per turn. I think that's reasonable. I don't think that's super, super crazy, but already you can see we're trying to, uh, trying to appease the ethnic minorities. And I think it's going to work, and I really, really do think it's going to work. Racial tension is going to be jumping off a cliff, which is fantastic to see. Diversity quotas for companies is going to be ruled out uh, over the course of two turns. So next turn, indeed, we should have uh, a much, much better result with, uh, with that. Okay, so we do need to introduce a policy this turn, just to make sure that we don't waste any political capital. Now, the important thing to note is everybody is still pretty happy with us at the moment, so that's kind of nice. And, uh, yeah, we don't really want that to stop, but unfortunately, I think it will stop. It really, really will. So, 
a policy that I like to introduce, but that takes a shit long time, which is why I always try and uh, start it up at the start of the campaign. You know, I always try and implement it at the start of the campaign is state housing. Now, state housing may be ridiculously, um, ridiculously unpopular with a lot of people, you know, like capitalists, for example. I say a lot of people. I mean, one one specific group, uh, capitalists. Um, but apart from that, it's a really, really great policy. I mean, it, it does reduce private housing, but who really gives a damn about that? I mean, that's that's not really a mechanic that we need to worry about in this game. You know, private housing, private housing, private pensions, private healthcare are all very, very wish-washy, um, very wish-washy uh, mechanics in this game. And I would like a little bit more clarification on them, but hey-ho, it's going to take 16 turns to implement. It is ridiculously, ridiculously long-term, and often um, we don't end up lasting, lasting that many turns. Now, the reason that this is a problem, right, is the fact that it costs such a darned large amount of money if we want to fully fund it, which is what we want to do, I'll tell you, which is really what we want to do, which unfortunately means that we're going to have to come up with a tax, plus in the next turn we're going to have to cancel this sales tax as well. The reason that we want to cancel this sales tax is because it is literally the worst tax, I think, um, in the game. I don't think this is really how sales taxes are supposed to work, but it's absurd what it does. I mean, look at this. Nothing is good here, right? Increasing poverty, decreasing the number of self-employed people that are happy with us. Same with capitalists, decreasing equality, uh, decreasing poor earnings, middle earnings, decreasing tourism, and decreasing internet currency adoption. So... The only good thing is the fact that it brings in 250 billion per turn, but apart from that, it's a shit policy. It's a really, really bad policy. Limiting debt protection law. Um, I think as socialists, we're going to say, yeah, limit the agency activity. Now, obviously, this isn't super, super great because capitalists are still going to get a little bit annoyed at us, but, you know, that's something that I can live with. Road building is traditionally something that I tend to scale back on, but is that something that we're going to do this time? Well, potentially. Potentially. Mm, yeah, well, my problem is, my problem is that uh, the traffic congestion does lead to a reduction in GDP. So, I suppose that could be a reason to continue spending on our roads, but I, I think road spending is fine at the moment. I'm just wondering, where are we actually going to get the money for the fact that we've got this massive state housing policy that's just been set up? And uh, the truth of the matter is, I don't know, but it's something that we're going to have to solve in the next turn. That's for damn certain. It's annoying. It's really, really annoying that we're going to have to deal with this. But, you know, unfortunately, we do. We really, really do. Our debt is going up. And then, and now you can see our deficit is more than $100 billion per turn. So, bing, you know, that's that's, that's triggering the mental the mental reminder to me to say, Orbital Deo, fix this, you fool. Fix it. And how are we going to fix it? I don't know. I really do not know. Um... An airline tax? Not really. I mean, we need to find a tax that f that literally gives us two hundred billion. A luxury goods tax? Not really my sort of jam, I'm afraid. A plastic bags tax? No. A mansion tax? No. A junk food tax? No. Recreational drugs tax? We don't really have any recreational drugs uh, implemented yet, but you know that's something that we could do if we wanted to. A punitive wealth tax? Nope. Public tax returns, nope. Tax on superstores, no. Religious institutions tax, nope. Nope, 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 nope. I suppose the only thing that we can really do is a couple of policies, a couple of tax policies. And it's not really the route that I wanted to go down. It's, it's really not, but if we have to, then that's fine. I mean, this is this is really not the route that we want to go down. But you know, that extra forty billion is is not going to go wasted. You know, it is not going to be wasted. It is definitely going to be going back into the fact that we've got a shit ton of uh, a shit ton of deficit that we need to that we need to pay down. And I am absolutely okay doing that. Now, what are the other taxes that we're going to want to to try and fill this this massive void? This luxury goods tax is certainly some of the way towards it, but. I don't know. I really do not know. Uh, it does increase brain drain, which is something that we we don't really want to do, and we don't want to, and we don't want to. Uh, I don't know. I don't think. I don't think we want it. I really do not think we want it. There's an automation tax. I suppose there is an automation tax. Yeah. Let's let's implement this automation tax. Not very much political capital. Once again, reducing our technology, which is going to eventually just chip away at our technological advantage. 
And, you know, we'll, we'll try and get 130 billion out of this. Not a super, super large amount of money, but it's, it's definitely, definitely, definitely better than what we've got right now. Uh, any more taxes that we want to introduce. Now, these taxes, I want to make it abundantly clear, are not going to be around for, for very long. Uh, punitive tax on superstores. Yeah, so, yeah, we're going to take a fairly substantial hit to GDP, unfortunately, by this. Uh, also, capitalists are going to start to dislike us, but I really do see that this is the only way that we can go about doing things. I mean, if you look at cutting expenditure, I was advised in the comments not to cut military expenditure because we, we simply cannot deal with the unemployment and um, and the sort of... and and the uprising that that causes, because people get really, really fucking pissed off when they're unemployed, and I can appreciate that fact. So, you know, let's try and raise our money through alternate means. And let's face it, the amount of money that we're collecting from all of our um, additional taxes, so the punitive tax on superstores, the high-tech products tax, and the automation tax, are all actually giving us a relatively small amount of money in comparison to our income tax, which is really taking, uh, really taking in the brunt of the, the Wonga Wonga Dosh Dosh. We're going to leave the law unchanged. And the reason that I say leave the law unchanged, and that might upset socialists, and I can completely appreciate that, but the fact of the matter is that we can't afford to let the capitalists get too annoyed with us. So, you know, hey-ho. Next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, is we're going to be getting rid of trading delays. Trading delays is one of those things that I don't really see the need for. They seem a little bit, they seem a little bit daft to be honest because they do fucking nothing. I mean, who gives a shit about self-employed people? I mean, they don't rise up into a group. They don't really constitute a major sector of our economy, as far as I'm aware. State employees, self-employed people. No, they're like I don't know, ten percent or whatever. So, in all honesty. Super, super not bothered by the fact uh, that this automated trading thing is around, and uh, I will be very, very glad to get rid of it very, very soon indeed. Still getting a decent amount of political capital. Really cannot complain about that fact. Very, very happy to see. A superhero, crime and violent crime, both going down. Healthcare also going down. Why? Oh, because we left the law unchanged, yep, and so we didn't choose to regulate children's food. Bit of a bummer, but hey-ho. Now, we are running a slight surplus, but this surplus is is nothing to be... It's nothing to write home about. Let's let's face the facts here, because we took a GDP hit, which means that we're going to be collecting less in taxes. Uh, not to mention the fact that our, global eco that our global economy, that the entirety of the global economy is just trending downwards, and it will be continuing to trend downwards for the next few turns, so that is going to lead to an inevitable uh, an inevitable reduction in the amount of, of surplus money that we've got right now. In fact, I dare say the complete erosion of, uh, of this surplus money is entirely possible. Now, is it possible for us to end alcohol abuse? If we could end alcohol abuse, then that would, uh, that would, that would be a winner, in fairness. That would be a real, real winner. How are we doing in terms of getting rid of ghettos? Because that's something that I want to get rid of. Racial tension is trending downwards. That's great. Diversity quotas for companies... Why the hell is that not implementing quicker? It should be fully implemented. But, hey-ho, that's okay, that's, that's fine, whatever. Um, homelessness is going to start trending down, but it's not going to start trending down at any super rapid pace, because this, this policy takes 16 turns to implement, if you can believe that. That's ridiculous. But I suppose building houses and stuff, it's kind of important. So, really the only way that we can sort of save money, and I mean that in the in this sort of lightest sense, is by trying to eradicate this problem of alcohol abuse. And the way that we do that, primarily, is through the, re the reduction of alcohol consumption. Um, and really, the only way that we can do anything about that, because we've already got this law at 21, I mean, we could up it, right? And I can appreciate that, but the liberals would get really fucking pissed off at us. So that's not really something that we want to do. What I think we have to do instead is introduce a tax to try and curb the alcohol consumption. Now, a tax is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is going to cost a significant amount of political capital. However, it's also going to bring us in a little bit of extra money and help secure that surplus for the future. Now, I know we're going to lose a little bit of political capital by just turning over the leaf, you know, letting the turn flick to the next one. I'm okay with this. And the reason that I'm okay with this is because we will have our cap of political capital. You know, it can't get any higher. That's fine. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Now, once again, we're seeing the global economy go down, and as a result, our GDP is going down. So next turn, income is going to be rather, rather tight, unfortunately. But that's okay. That is going to be remedied by the fact that we're introducing this alcohol tax. And this is probably... Well, in fact, oh, this carbon tax is very, very nice, but 
it, it could lead to a corporate exodus because we're, we're being very, very mean to our businesses right now. We really are. I mean, I do like the idea of a carbon tax. I really do like it. I mean, it's one of the taxes that can just bring in a shit ton of money. I mean, I think after flat income tax, yeah, it's probably one of the biggest out there. I mean, well, income tax, flat income tax, no, flat income tax, then income tax, and then carbon tax. I would imagine it's, it's fairly good. Uh, but it's not really what we need right now. We need an alcohol tax, and we need it to reduce, um, to reduce consumption. Now, what really annoys me about this policy is the fact that it reduces equality, and I think that that is completely unfair. Um, and it also increases poverty by 13%. That's not something I really like at all about this policy, but, you know... <laughs> Yeah, I suppose we've got to introduce it. We've got to try and get this alcohol consumption down. So you know what, I think we actually just go balls to the wall and say, hey, let's just try and fucking get rid of it. I mean, it's going to give us an extra little bit of amount of money, you know, about 100 billion or so. So I suppose that can go towards paying back our debt, but I'd rather not. I really just, I really just don't want to make poverty any higher than it currently is. And it's really going to skyrocket thanks to this alcohol tax. Hopefully, the effects of this alcohol tax can be countered by the fact that we've got this state housing thing in uh, in motion. But it still doesn't sit well with me. It still doesn't sit well with me. Also, we're going to raise food stamps because it's one of the best policies in the game. It doesn't upset anybody and it just does so, so much good. Very, very good policy there. Uh, police. Police are something that we're actually also going to have to increase spending to. Um... Try and get rid of this vigilante mobs, which does actually feed into ghettos, which is not something that we're super, super, super thrilled about. Also, we could try and reduce our unemployment because of the fact that we've got uh, a little bit more state employees. But, you know what? It's not a bad start. It's really not a bad start. I think we're starting on a stronger foot than we did last time. Now, obviously, there are always going to be people that are annoyed. There are always people that are going to, you know, join groups. But I really do not think that we've got to mu that we've got much to worry about from the people like ethnic minorities. I think socialists, right, potentially could be a problem. Oh, I forgot to reduce this, didn't I? Yeah, I'll do that in the next episode. But yeah, I don't think we've got anything to worry about from the ethnic minorities. I really, really don't. I think we've tried to appease them as much as we can. Capitalists, on the other hand, well, we've introduced a shit ton of taxes, and that will be taking a toll on the capitalists also the environmentalists i really i would i would predict i really really would predict that environmentalists will be pissed off with us by the end of this campaign i don't know why it's just a little feeling that i've got a little feeling you know and sometimes sometimes all you need is a feeling but anyway ladies and gentlemen thank you very very much for watching democracy 3 my name of course has been over potato this has been a socialist usa and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.